So let's 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 review the game though, right? So Thomas, when you're watching that game, you're looking at the Philadelphia Eagles, a, a a great football team from top to front, right? Like back to front, and you're and they're they're doing everything right. They're applying their edge. They're getting. They're making fourth downs. They're making third downs. I thought Jalen Hurts played as well as we could have ever imagined last night. Yeah. You know, Kansas City, they 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 make some mistakes early. Um, they get behind. And then I have to tell you, I thought the second half, I don't think I've ever seen a guy call plays better than Andy Reid in the second half. And so what, mm-hmm. what I think was really cool was that you had a team in the Eagles. They had like 26 first downs and like 12, I think 13 of them, or it was 13 to 24 or something like that. Like a significant part of their their their, their conversions on first downs were on third and fourth down. And then you had Kansas City who was so good calling plays. They only had to convert four third downs the whole night. And when you watch a game like that and it's the biggest stage mm-hmm. and you have the two best teams in football and they both play wonderful football games, I don't think you can be upset with the, you know, and I'm obviously you know, a Kansas City fan, but like I, I was, I watched that game and, and I truly would have been okay with either team winning. I, I, I truly would have looked at this and said, we're crowning the best team in the NFL last night. And, and did you kind of get that? I and mean, what were your takeaways from the game? Yeah, I would just I would just say I went in there thinking that Howie had an edge with that team as far as I'm talking about the, Howie Roseman, of course, that mm-hmm. the Eagles had an edge just because they had so much momentum going. I knew, and I'm sure everyone who really has, has studied them, those are two, in my mind, those are two best teams in the country, in the NFL, and they were going to play off and it was going to come down to it in the very end. I was, I loved it. I think it was great. I think watching how they were kind of, you know, sort of back and forth. I always love games like that. I mean, I just felt like everyone was, was dialed in. I mean, look what, you know, seeing what Andy did to your point about calling the plays, although he did, he did give Eric Bieniemy massive kudos for that for one reason or another. Maybe it was, was a combination of both of them. I mean, even down on the goal line, they were, they were, they weren't like massively creative, but just what they did sort of, you know, drifting in, coming back out on, you know, back-to-back touchdowns, one with the receiver, one with the back, right? Was that the second one? Was a, Who was the second? Yeah, one? well, I, it, it's crazy because the Chiefs this year had, a, I think, a worse percentage of conversion on third and fourth and one than they did on third and fourth or six or more. Yeah. And what was really cool is they, they converted all the short yardage stuff. They had the Pacheco running yeah. touchdown and then both. And, I, and it's actually funny because I've watched this team so much that – I saw Kadarius Tony in the game on his first touchdown. And I said, Oh, they're going to run the jet sweep to Kadarius Tony. And yeah. they ran it and then faked it. And then he's wide open for a touch. And then, so Andy Reid's got some rube like me, like mixed up at home watching. Of course, you know, he's got everybody twisted around. And then they ran the exact same play to Sky Moore, their second round pick this year. Yeah. And that was Sky Moore's first touchdown. In fact, I think what, one interesting part of this game, Thomas, and you can maybe allude to how difficult this is there was not a wide receiver that played a snap last night for the chiefs that played for the team last year. They were all new. And you look and you think that's that, that to me, that's coaching, right? That's acclimating players. That's, that's front office acquiring players who will fit and knowing that, and that's the quarterback being so good that you can of course overcome, uh, you know, some of the inconsistencies across the roster and, 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 and to be able to run that kind of stuff, against a great defense shows to me coaching and, and, and like a, a sort of special nature to, to basically the whole org there. Yeah. I mean, just to, just to piggyback off of that, there is, there is no question that they came in as you know, dialed in. I mean, watching, you know, watching Mahomes get injured. And I thought right away, I thought if I were to be on the defensive side, you know, I'd be going and, and, and chipping away a little bit at the lower level, not, not, not to hurt someone, but just to let them know that you're there. And, Man, he he jumped back up. Who knows what happened at halftime? They came back out, and man, I just I just was so impressed with it. And as I am with that organization, even at the end, I don't I, I don't want to get away from us here. But watching, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, watching Clark Hunt and Andy Reid and and Brett Veach. Even though I want to say, I, I get mad at guys and pissed off at guys like Terry Bradshaw that don't mention the GM. Right? They mention mm-hmm. Andy and 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 of course, you know, of course, quarterbacks and. You got you got the best tight end in the country making uh, all kinds of noise like he always does. And there's Brett Veach in the back there 
mention the GM because he's been such an important part yeah. to that. And this has always been something that's been on my mind. Not, not, not for any other reason, but they put their heart and soul into it as well. And I just, I felt like he needed to be, a, um, you know, he needed to be um, kudo, you know, given. But you think about this, you think about this, Thomas, the chiefs are six to one to win the Super Bowl next year. Yeah. They were about that in December this year, five to one, I think is, and, and, and I, it is, it is a general, that was a general who, who traded for Kadarius Tony in the middle of the season? Like right. that was Brett Veach, right? Yeah. And and you know and and Brett Veach has done this, right? Like he has he traded for uh, or he signed Josh Gordon, he he signed Emmanuel Agba, he traded yeah. he signed DeAndre Baker, he traded for Frank Clark. He's always gone after these like high end draft picks that other teams thought were failures, and they've all kind of now they all not that many have hit hit like Kadarius did last night, but. He's got a process. He puts it in place. And I and I gotta say, like, and, and we're giving flowers on you know, Mike Borgonzi, the assistant GM, the sure. GP of football, admin Brant Tillis, who you know writes all the con you know, does the contracts. And, and I got so another one. You got a guy like like Ted Cruz, and I'm saying this, yeah, the best, the best communications head of media, yeah. VP of media in the country. The way that he deals with everything that has gone down there through the years where things were pretty rocky, as you know, when 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 you know a God rest his soul. Suicide happens all the way through. I mean, to even keep things in order during a lot of really funky times, because as you know, what the Chiefs have done as well, brother, is they have taken guys that have not passed the, the sort of Kool-Aid acid test for a lot of teams per character, right? But of course, Andy Reid knows that he can bring people in there and he can work with them. He can keep them in line, just like Bill Belichick can, right? But you have to give kudos to the people at the top of the organization like Ted Cruz to keep things in order. Yeah. I, and I'm not, I'm not just riffing off on something else. It's very important. Any of you rising execs, you make sure you get a stud in that position working for you. If you become a GM or a head coach, man, it is so important for that guy to, to, to rock a great understanding of making sure that the right information's out there. Yeah. And, and the, and the thing, yeah. And you, you know, this is an organization that has lost people, right? Like you, you're talking about, you know, guys like Cruz and, and Tillis and like those guys have been there, you know, even um, Ryan Poles, he, they were hired by the Pioli regime, right? They were, they stuck through the, and those were tough times at the end. And then they, they, you know, and, and everybody talks about how Sirianni left after uh, Haley's regime and, and Pioli's regime left. Um, but a lot of those guys sk stayed. Andy Reid comes in, of course, and they have the, you know, the five years with Alex Smith that were all really good but not Super Bowl caliber. Then you have the five years with, with Pat Mahomes that were all Super Bowl caliber and they win two now. And, but they've won two in two different ways, right? Like they, they've done the phase transition. They've gone from the quarterback on a rookie deal. I actually, I, I messaged with somebody in the org today. I was like, this one's special. And he, he was kind of like, oh, they're all special. I'm like, no, I mean, th it, this is the first team that's won with a quarterback making over 13% of the cap in a long time. Like this is, you are, not at a disadvantage necessarily because I, I don't I don't believe that I think any team that has Patrick Mahomes is at an advantage, but it's harder, of course, now when he's making all the money to win than when he wasn't. And so I think this one, you know, is especially so given, especially that you win against a team whose quarterback was making 1.6 million and played every bit the 45 million that Patrick Mahomes plays. And and again, so you overcome all those things. I don't think you do that just because of one guy. I do think Mahomes is you know the best quarterback in the world. But you do that because of a really big organization. And I agree with you. We do need to take a step back and say, you know, Brett Veach built this team. And yeah. he built this team, you know, he built this team and you say incremental leadership. Like he when he started as a GM, he was very much backseat to, to Andy Reid. I think he deserves, you know, to be considered now in the front seat, you know, sitting shotgun at worst. And in many cases, driving the car when you think about, there's no re there's no way Andy Reid wanted to trade Tyreek Hill, right? That was very much a front office move for the betterment of the team, for the future, and for everybody to buy into that move. And, and now you look at the team, and they're very healthy cap wise. They're very healthy draft pick wise. You look at the composition of ages on their team. It, it, it it's this is just the start, I think. Which for many cases, when a team wins the Super Bowl with a quarterback on the rookie deal, it's a relief because the window's closing. I think the door is just starting to open for this team. This was supposed to be the Bills year. This was supposed to be the Chargers year, the Bengals year, and the Chiefs sort of sneak in and win a Super Bowl. It To me, again, 
I agree with you. I think it's bad that we don't necessarily give Veach and his team as much credit as maybe they deserve in a situation like this. Great, great um, way to articulate. I mean, as you always do. I mean, let me just finish with, with Brett. So what's that? That's two Super Bowls for him as a GM, right? Three appearances, two Super Three, Bowls. Yep. Think, think about this. I mean, maybe that first one, you know, again, ostensibly young. I mean, he's still young. I, I Last time I went through there and interviewed him, he's like, not that young, Thomas. I'm like, well, in the scope of it all, you're you're pretty damn young. Now this year, he continues to grow, and he has more and more presence in the league and more and more respect in the league. I said this to, to Jason Light two years ago, and I know he was so uncomfortable. I said, when you win the Super Bowl, you are literally the best GM in football in the world. And those guys go, oh, no, no, in the world. I mean, right now, Brett Veach, he is until the next season starts, he is the best GM out there, yeah. hands down. And he did it. He did it with a lot of really good people around him. He was at the helm along with Andy, and Andy lets him do stuff. He lets him do all he needs to do to be the GM he can be. And I remember talking to Andy about it. He said, I have the utmost respect in Brett Veach and how he's going to run this organization. And look, we can go on and on about it. He deserves his kudos, and, and, and congratulations, Brett Veach. You completely deserve to be on top of the heap here. Yep, I agree. I think I think when you when you win when Mahomes is young – Everybody can say, "Oh, that's an e that's a cheat." I think when you win this Super Bowl with this roster and the moves that they made, uh, I think it's unequivocal that the that the general manager and his team uh, deserve. Uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's every bit real. Uh, you know, and and there's no there's no there's no if ands or buts about it in this case. And so, congratulations to the Chiefs, a very well deserved, and, and congratulations to the Eagles. Look, the Eagles are a very good football team, and as I said at the beginning of this whole thing, if they would have won. Uh, I think they would have been very deserving, and and there are plenty of really good people in that building, and I think that they will they will they'll be back at some point soon. I, I mean, they went through they went through hell and back, and they've been in the five years between their first Super Bowl appearance and their second one in this regime. And, and you know, there's no doubt in my mind that they're built uh, to last, especially in that in that conference. So. 